to be here with you today. Yeah, this is really awesome. I cannot say more about how amazing those volcano sushis were from your book with Johnny Juicer. Like, mind-blowingly epic. <laughs> Nate and I have made them like quite a few times since we got the book. We're like, oh, hey. that's amazing. Yeah, they're that's definitely one of my top favorite things to make. And that sauce, it's really interesting. I find like we all use the same ingredients, right? Pretty much. But yeah. everyone has their own unique way of creating, using those ingredients to create something. And I'm blown away by the creativity in this bundle, like legit. Click the link in the chat if you guys want to get the bundle because I'm like blown away, like I said. So thank you for having me for one and for making yeah. that. I wanted to say of that. Of course. That means so much because your your photos and your recipes are just stunning and amazing. And it makes me so happy that you're loving the sushi. It, it really is. It's crazy how many different things you can do with the same ingredients. Yeah, totally. It really is. And just looking at all the different recipes, like um, there's our friend Daniel, he has the chicken balls and the process to make them was so unique. I couldn't even like, I was like, wow, this is so smart, right? Because everyone has their own little yeah. doing things. But yeah, it's, it's incredible. We all have different uh, ways to use the ingredients. Yeah, it's, it's, it is. It's mind blowing, and everyone's different perspective brings um, something so valuable. So, I just I want to know more about you. I mean, we've been connected, but I I think there's there's a lot that I want to know. Um, how did this, how did this bundle even start? <laughs> Sorry, what was that? How did this bundle even start? Well, yeah, that's a good question. I don't think I've ever been asked that one yet. Um, so Chris Kendall and I have been included in multiple other bundles that are like vegan with cooked food and fitness and stuff. And we still do those bundles. Like there's another one called the plant-based bundle, which they do a couple times a year. There's another one called vegan what bundle. And we like to be a part of those bundles as well because it gets more raw food out to more people. Even though there's some cooked stuff in there, the raw foodies can buy those bundles and use the cooked meals for their families or friends that aren't eating the same way. But we like to be able to provide an option for raw food. So Chris and I had been part of a few bundles before and we did find it like a little bit more difficult to sell those bundles because they had so many co cooked items in it. And, and not saying that cooked food is bad or toxic or poisonous or what have you, but people were really looking for more raw. Like they wanted more raw than just what was in the bundle. They're like, oh, there's only like four raw books in this bundle, um, but I'll still get it because I want to support you or whatever. So they would still buy it. But Chris and I, one day, Nate and I were driving to Portland or somewhere. I can't remember where we were going, but we're in the truck. And Chris messaged me and he said, are you having a hard time selling the bundle? And I was like, yeah, kind of, because there's like cooked food stuff in there and everything. And again, not against cooked vegan food, but just harder to sell for the raw vegan audience. And I was like, yeah, it would be so cool if there was an all raw bundle, like everything in it was raw and everyone got new raw stuff or what have you. And he was like, yeah, I was thinking the same thing. And I was like, you want to make one? And he's like, Sure. <laughs> so I don't really know who it was that, that said it first, but we decided to do the ultimate raw vegan bundle. And the ebooks that are part of this bundle are all raw. And we focus on low fat. There's zero oil in the recipes. If we caught a recipe with oil, we, we messaged, we're like, please, can you swim, swap it out or what have you? Because we just wanted to keep it as balanced as possible. And the two of us worked together. He did a lot of the arranging emails with the creators and I did all the back end stuff. So the website, the, like there's two websites. There's the website with, you know, the pretty stuff that everyone sees, which is the link in the chat, pinned chat, <laughs> link in bio. Um, there's a website that I had to design and I organize everyone's pictures and all that stuff. And 
the back end where all the files are because there's over 50 ebooks in there and each one is different from different contributors so i had to do all that it's a lot of work plus i had to write my own ebook i wrote two ebooks for this bundle the party right. book and the let it snow raw in the winter so i've been working my butt off trying to get this done and we are so grateful to all of you for being part of it and for engaging and doing these lives. It's just been so much fun to have this party, but that's how it started. It was just one day we were like, let's do it. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. I mean, your, your food is really next level. So for anyone watching, check her out. She has amazing recipes, inspiration, and it's just, it's so beautiful to just be able to share more raw with people and um you know we're, we're heading into the winter months and it's not something that's on everyone's minds but it's important to eat raw greens and however they get incorporated into your meals there's literally i don't know is there there's more than a thousand recipes or do you know how many recipes yeah, yeah it, it's insane yeah and also uh you mentioned we're heading into the the colder months also the holiday months, right? We've yeah. got many people do celebrate Thanksgiving and Christmas and that. So we've got holiday recipes. We all got together, all of us to create the holiday ebook, right? There's, well, there's 40, I think there's like 43 contributors that contributed 63 recipes total. So there's like raw stuffing. There's my raw Christmas quiche in there. There's salads and dressings and soup and main courses, desserts and beverages. There's so much in that holiday book and the holiday book is only available during the bundle. So if you buy the bundle, you get it. It's a collector's edition and it's only available until November 1st. So that's definitely a good one for holidays and these next couple months to get cozy. <laughs> yeah, totally. So what is, what's your process when you're creating recipes? Cause I know just looking at them, that there's so much thought and love that goes into them. I'd love to hear kind of what, what's happening behind the scenes for that. Yeah, so when I make a recipe book, I start out with just getting inspiration. So I, I pick a theme, whatever that might be. For this one, it was appetizers and party food. So I get online and I look for anything, hashtag appetizer, party food, whatever I get on Pinterest, Google, whatever, and I just search and I just get inspired and I look at all these different recipes and I'm like, how could I do that raw? How could I make that raw? Ooh, that's a great idea. How could I incorporate this into something? Or how could I change it so that it can be raw? And what ingredients am I gonna use? So I'll write down like a whole list of all the different ideas that I come up with. And that's when I get into my editing app, I really like using Canva to edit my eBooks in right now. I used to use InDesign, but I like Canva now because it's like step beyond. <laughs> I just love all the options that you have for design. So yeah. I'll get and I just start writing the recipes. I take one page at a time and I type up the recipe the way I feel like it would work, right? Then I finish all the recipes. I get them all into the book and then I get in the kitchen and I do one recipe at a time. And as I'm building the recipe, I'm realizing certain things like I could lower the amount of cumin in that dish or maybe I need less cayenne. And then once I blend it, I'm like, oh yeah, there was too much jalapeno in that, maybe half a jalapeno or it's too lemony, so maybe half the lemon juice. And once I make it, then I can adjust the recipe in Canva really easily. I can make it again if I feel like I really need to make dramatic changes. But for the most part, that's how I do it. I type up all the recipes first, and then Nate and I, for like one weekend or like a few days, we make all 50 recipes all at once, and the kitchen's a mess, and it's a great time. <laughs> wow, that's such a different process uh, than, than what I do. Uh, that's really interesting. I'm, I might have to try that. I love <laughs> I, I just have the recipes in my head and I know what I'm going to do, but to type it out beforehand and kind of be able to visualize it in that way could be really helpful. <laughs> it is, it is, because then you're not like, oh, because then you're not writing it down as you're going, right? Because we have to write the recipe down at some point. So writing them all up in Canva is so easy. And I have tried in the past doing like 
I'll make a recipe one random day, I'll write it down and then I take the picture. And then maybe two months later, I do another recipe or whatever and I kind of collect them. I find that when it's time to do the actual recipe book, I don't like any of the photos that I took. So I'm like, I have to make it all over again anyways. So I, that's how I came up, up about this new process that I like to do. Just type them all up and then make them all within four days. <laughs> that's a lot of food. <laughs> it's a lot of food. It is a lot of food. And a lot of time for the, um, the burger book that I released last bundle, those were fun because I made 60 burgers, 60 different burgers in that book. Exactly. And I, I would put them in the lettuce, the lettuce leaves for the bun. So what I would do is I would take a picture of one of the burgers and then I would take the lettuce off, rinse it under the sink because lettuce does great rinsed underwater. And I would just save it for the next burger. And I saved some of the toppings. Like I reused a lot of the ingredients from one burger because if one burger had caramelized onions on it and there was another burger with caramelized onions I just saved those for the next burger so I didn't have to make like you know full batches of absolutely everything it was a lot easier to do it that way and for the soup book as well we did that too so we would like save certain things from other soups to work like if I blended a sauce that was similar to another sauce sometimes I'd save that just for photos um, yeah but yeah, it was a really, it's a really interesting process to try and save food at the same time. And Nate and I are just like, we eat so much on those days, but it's good. It's tasty. <laughs> That's pretty genius. Oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love was. that. <laughs> yeah. So how do you feel it's all going? How are you doing during this process? Are you like excited for the finish line I mean, this is we only have is it six days left mm -hmm. yeah we've got six days left i'm enjoying every moment of it because i love connecting with people like you like we've never had a conversation like this before so this yeah. is, and i'm so grateful for everybody you included for coming in and helping to build the bundle and to make it epic and all that stuff so to me this is like the highlight of the year Aside from a festival, obviously, if we go to Woodstock, that's going to be amazing, too, for connection. But I love being able to connect with everybody in the chat and help people and give them these lives. Because I feel like throughout the year, we don't do enough lives. We don't do enough interviews. And we just don't do enough of that kind of stuff. So when it comes to the bundle, it's like this big party where we all get together and we talk about different topics and promote the bundle, right? So it helps people support those who they enjoy learning from most is like buy the bundle, buy the bundle from close link, right? Like go there and click and grab the bundle. And if you enjoy these lives, like interact and have fun, like see everyone saying hi, everyone. Yeah, it's great. I, I just love it. And the finish line, the last day is always the best day. It's actually World Vegan Day. We're ending on World Vegan Day. So we're going to be talking a lot about veganism and not just raw, like it's because it's an ethical you, we do this for ethical reasons. It just so happens that we eat raw food for health, right? So it's going to be fun to end on World Vegan Day. We chose that day specifically to end on that one. But yeah, it's, it's a blast. I, I definitely haven't slept enough. Because <laughs> I deal with, Chris and I deal with all the back end stuff. So refunds, if people accidentally bought twice, or if they buy the bundle and they type email address in wrong and they never got the email so we have to go in and we tidy all of that stuff up answering questions and 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 also working with all of you guys the creators and giving you advice and help and working with the schedule and all that stuff so it's it's a lot of work but it's so worth it <laughs> yeah yeah you guys do such a good job you're so on top of it I really appreciate all the all the emails all the help you guys have done it's it's Thank very, you. very well done. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Rock Koala is saying you can sleep on November 2nd. <laughs> right? Nate and I are actually going to go out to the desert. I think we're going to spend some time out there after the bundle where we can get back to doing our regular routine <laughs> and stuff like that. But it's so fun to do stuff like this. And I'm, I'm okay yeah. with it. <laughs> what desert? Um, we're in Las Vegas, so we're, we'll probably go to Valley of Fire or 
maybe Zion. I'm not sure yet where we're going to go, but I, I love just the Nevada desert and, and Utah too is like so gorgeous. So we'll be going out there. We went um, to Red Rock, which is only about 20 minutes away uh, the other morning. And we walked up to this area and we just sat on some rocks and just meditated for 10 minutes. And it was in complete silence and it was so nice. It's neat, it, neat to have that balance between all the lives that are going on and everything that's going on and to find silence in nature. So that was really needed. And we need to do that again. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a, it's a great way to celebrate. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Um, sure. Yeah. So I think, you know, another question that I, I would love to ask you is people know, obviously, the health benefits of eating healthier, right? All of the incredible things you gain um, physically, but, but beyond that, what did you experience um, as unexpected benefits that you like had no idea about or that were going to happen? That's a really fun question because my life is completely different now than, different. than it was. And, and this is like all areas of my life, literally all areas of my life are so different from the day that I went raw. So when I went raw, I was married to my ex-husband. I was working full time as a professional photographer. I was overweight. I had cystic adult acne. I had very low self-esteem. I was living in Canada. And yeah, now, I mean, seven years later, yeah, seven years, a lot's gonna change, but I'm now married to Nate and I live in the US. <laughs> like I immigrated to the US. I have a totally different job. Like this is my, this is my job is helping people online. Mm -hmm. And I take pictures of food now instead of people. <laughs> I write recipe books. I've never written books before I went raw. So going raw changed so much about my life in general, not just my health. My spirituality has deepened. My connection to nature has deepened. There's so many positive benefits to it. And I would never, ever change what happened because yes, I went through a lot of stress. I got divorced. And then I had a boyfriend after my ex who I had for about a year and a half who was an alcoholic. He did a lot of drugs. He ate junk food like crazy. He respected my choices to be raw because I told him at the beginning, I was like, okay, so here's the deal. <laughs> if you want to date me, you're going to be okay with my raw food stuff. Cause I'm not going to say yes to anything you ask. And he never asked. I mean, he asked one time, if, you, if I wanted one of his McDonald's fries, but he was like super drunk and he didn't realize that he asked, he was like, you want a fry? And I'm like, no. <laughs> He's like, oh yeah, sorry. But like, I stayed raw through it all. I stayed raw through it, of course. I mean, we broke up, that, that other guy and I broke up. I went through a lot of stress, a lot of stress with all that. And really interestingly, after I lost my 70 pounds, when I first went raw, a lot of people would probably think that I had a lot more self-esteem when I lost all that weight, right? Like feeling great and I've lost all this weight and feeling healthy. And I did. I felt amazingly healthy and I was proud of myself for what I did. But life circumstances, I had the lowest self-esteem about myself, about myself personally, like me, my soul, right? Not my body because I was proud of where I'd gone. I, have, I was proud of myself for getting rid of my acne and healing my joint pain and all that. That was great. But I felt like I wasn't good enough for anything because my ex and I, our relationship had come to this place where I felt like I was constantly reinforced that I sucked. It was like, I wasn't a good wife. I wasn't, a, I wasn't good enough at washing the dishes. I wasn't good enough photographer. I wasn't good enough at anything. So by the time I had lost all that weight, I, that was, that was about where we split because it had gotten to a point where I was the lowest in my self-esteem and we had such massive problems in our relationship that had nothing to do with diet. It was all like a relationship outside circumstances and stuff. So we split up and I had a hard time, like not just saying that it was easy and that I was just like, oh, I'm raw through the whole thing. I chose raw through the whole thing. I made sure that I nourished my body because I know that when I go through stress, 
I eat junk <laughs> and I didn't want to be that person anymore because I'd already done like over a year's mm. worth of healthy choices and I didn't want to go back to the old way because I knew I was just going to fall into the same stuff that wasn't working the whole time. So I did have a lot of struggles during that more life circumstances and the raw food really helped me to cope with all the stuff that I was going through. So it was, it was a really interesting time. <laughs> and now I'm happy, super happy having a great life with my love and just writing recipe books and helping people. It's, uh, I'm so blessed. And I thank the girl that I was before who was depressed and sad and, and confused and didn't know what to do. Like she, I always wanted to go raw, but I was always doing it wrong. I had no idea what I was doing. I was unhealthy. I was binge eating all kinds of junk food and everything. I thank that girl because she made the choice to do it and to try uh, new things out of her comfort zone. Cause I was scared of fruit. I was scared of eating low fat. I was scared of eating more calories because of diet culture. So I stepped out of my comfort zone and I tried it. And I'm so grateful to that person for doing that because my life is totally different now. Yeah. And I think having that gratitude for where we were in the past um, mm. is, is so transformational because, you know, there's always like this before and after comparison. And it's like, well, that person is still a part of me. So it's not this like destination that I'm trying to, to move away from it's just it was part of the journey and it was needed and it's it's such a beautiful way to look at that so i love that yeah definitely it's definitely worth it that's for sure <laughs> yeah yeah for sure so what are what is your favorite recipe from from one of your new ebooks fun <laughs> I actually was sharing in my stories, a lot of people are making the pepper nori sticks. It's like the, the, it's nori sheets, right? You get untoasted nori and then you just make this like filling and you fill it and you roll them up and dehydrate them. And people are loving those. They are so delicious. And I've had a lot of people say they taste like certain, um, like European style sausage sticks. And even Jade was saying it tastes like the, uh, there's like one that they make in Australia too. So it's really cool. It's like satisfying a lot of people. And I love that recipe. It's one of my favorites. But if I had to make only one out of my new book, I would say the green onion cakes. Because I grew up eating green onion cakes in Canada a lot. My family would order a lot of them. And they remind me of my childhood. So I made them, the base is like green onion and, um, Irish moss gel. So uh, the Irish moss, it's a great way to get your Irish moss, <laughs> which helps you produce healthy collagen for naturally beautiful skin. <laughs> so yeah, Twiggy sticks. Yeah, that's what it was. That's what Jade called them. Twiggy sticks <laughs> in Australia. And they taste a lot like that. So she was like, whoa, they're so good. Those would be the two. But I love the taco cups. I love the, oh my gosh, I can't even think of all the ones in there. Um, there's like these coconut mushrooms that look like little coconut shrimps. And I have like a cocktail sauce that you can dip them in. There's just some really unique recipes in there. There's over, uh, no, there's 50 recipes exactly in that book. Wow. Yeah. You've been busy. <laughs> I have been busy. Yep, I have, definitely. <laughs> um, that's, that's so interesting. I... I've had like those nori sticks, but I've never made them myself. So I'll have to look at that. I was not expecting that to be one of your favorites. So I love it. Yeah, definitely. So that fun. is fun. When we made them, we, I made extra. I made like a double, triple batch or whatever. And we had them just on the counter and we were eating them throughout the whole time when we were making all the other food. So I, that's one of the ones I remember the most because it's all a blur. <laughs> we made... 50 recipes in three days wow. and took the, all the pictures and everything. So <laughs> it was intense. Yep. That's impressive. <laughs> <laughs> so what are, what are some of the uh, reactions that you get from people who try your food, who have never had like Ooh. raw vegan prepared food for them? I, I'm so curious. Yeah, it depends on the person and where they're coming from. Because, you mm -hmm. know, 
you're trying to get someone who eats McDonald's every day and is overstimulated with salt and fat and sugar, right? They're probably going to be like, eh, it tastes different, right? It is, yeah. Raw food is never like cooked food. It has its own glory. It's its own awesomeness. And it's going to taste different. We can make it look like stuff but it's going to have its own flavor. And I feel like for the majority of people, they're always like really impressed with the flavors, especially the flavors in my recipes. They're like, oh, I've tried raw food in the past and it was bland, but your recipes are so flavorful. Like I'm so impressed with those. So I get a lot of more positive than kind of the neutral, like, oh yeah, it's good. <laughs> I only get that from the people who have already a diet that's like overstimulating that oh. they not really tuned for the natural flavor of foods yet. <laughs> Hopefully one day they will be, but yeah, um, I would say overall it's very positive. Amazing. Um, somebody in the comments asked, do you have two kids? Can you recommend any sources of Irish sea moss? Where do you get yours from? Is it online or a store? Yeah, I get mine online just via Amazon, but I know Marcus and Kara Rothkranz, they have uh, Irish moss on their website. Their Irish moss is, um, it's pretty sandy. So when you soak it, you have to rinse it a lot to make sure that you get all the sand out of it. The one that we just got, I don't even remember the brand, but I bought it off Amazon and it was pretty clean. So we didn't have to rinse a lot of sand off of that one, but you want to make sure that you get the sand off. And it, as long as it says Irish sea moss, you're good to go. Beautiful. As long as it's not a powder, because the powder you want to add to smoothies and stuff. But if you want to actually make the gel, you have to get the whole, the real Irish moss. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Is there anything people should should try to avoid when they're buying that or um, look out for? It's pretty good to go. Uh, I haven't had any problems. I've used a lot of different brands in, in the last month or so because we have some and I, I've had it for years. I bought a bag like two years ago from Marcus and I just never made it because I was like, oh, I'll do it another time, blah, blah, blah. Right. You know, the typical thing, it's like, oh, it's so much work, but it's not, <laughs> it's not a lot of work at all. It's like, take it out of the bag and put it in a jar with water. It takes five seconds, <laughs> but it's like the thought of doing it sometimes feels overwhelming to us because it's new, right? It's not something that we've normally done before, but really yeah. it's easy. take it out of the bag, put it in some water, let it sit for like 24 to 48 hours. And then once it's fully rehydrated, rinse it really good, really, 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 really good. Put it in the blender with a cup or two of water and blend it into a slime. And then you've got it for the next two or so weeks. Uh, most Irish moss, once it's blended into a gel, lasts around two weeks in the fridge. And you can add a tablespoon or two to your smoothies for the collagen boosting properties of it. And it also helps you absorb more um, nutrients from your food and stuff. But uh, if you blend it under vacuum like if you have a vacuum blender and you blend it under vacuum it can last like three weeks or more because you're not blending a lot of air into it so it's not um gonna go bad as fast it's it stays pretty good and you could also vacuum seal it you could blend one big batch and you could put them into jars and seal them all and then you'd always have fresh like you could use one jar out over maybe three or four days and then open the next jar use that over three or four days Vacuum sealing and vacuum blending are game changers. Seriously, like next level. <laughs> I'll never go back to regular blending now. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Um, so earlier I heard you mention that you, one of the kind of side effects of like doing this lifestyle was it like deepened your spirituality and your relationship with I'm sure many different things. Can you? Can you tell me more about that? Because I've experienced that and, um, you know, just changing my lifestyle was a, um, was like a portal into a, a different life where, you know, mindfulness and connection and spirituality became extremely important to me. And had I not been connecting with my food in such a, such a way that was so just, directly connected to the earth, um, I don't think I would have experienced that. 
Yeah, I agree totally. And I and I had spirituality before, like we all did, but I feel like it was enhanced dramatically when we stopped putting the foods into our bodies that were disconnecting us with source energy, whatever that might be for people, God, energy, the universe, whatever you want to call it. We get back to that source when we eat the way that nature created the foods for us, right? We're not refining and processing and extracting all of the fiber and all that, right? Because we work symbiotically with our gut microbiome and that's a huge part of a healthy long-term raw food diet is a healthy biome. And I feel like a lot of people fall into the spirituality because they stop eating those foods, but they can go overboard in some cases where it becomes like a restrictive uh, or eating disorder patterns. And they use the spirituality to cover up the fact that they are in that space and they use the two together. So I feel like people have to really pay attention to what else they're doing that is bringing them into those states. But I feel like eating an abundant, beautifully colorful, tasty, delicious diet and really getting into connection with the food has deepened my spirituality when it comes to energy, all things energy, and also wanting to spend more time in nature. Cause yeah. I, think, I think a lot of it has to do with me moving to the US as well, because when I was in Canada, it wasn't fun to go outside. <laughs> like where I'm from, it was winter like seven or eight months out of the year. Like it was cold all the time. And then when it was nice, there was mosquitoes everywhere. So it's like, ugh, every time I go outside, it's either cold or there's bugs or it's raining or whatever, right? And so I didn't really have that really connection with nature. But when I got together with Nate, there was a lot more nature happening in my life. We went out a lot more hiking and exploring and stuff. And it was really nice because I had been longing for that but just wasn't able to. And it's really nice too, to be with a partner who is on the same lifestyle as well, where we connect on a totally different level. Oh, it's a meow meow. Ah. This is Panini. Panini. She just jumped jumped up. She wanted to say hi as you're talking about nature. (laughs) Oh my gosh, the cutest thing. I know, I'm like, where are my cats? I have two twin black kittens. And they are so precious. I love them. Oh so my much. God. I love it. I have a black cat as well. And he was knocking a bunch of things over. I was like, trying to be like, <laughs> can you stop? <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. The black cats, they are so precious. Yeah. Nick, um, was working on a farm about two years ago. Cause they're two years old now. And the farmer had like this farm cat who had gotten pregnant and for the third time. So they actually took her to get spayed after this last litter that she had, but nobody wanted the two little black kittens. And the guy who owned, who was uh, like running the farm, he was going to drive them up the mountain and leave them on the side of the road because no one wanted them. So Nate, I had just lost my cat of 20 years about a week or so before So we still had the cat carrier in the back of the truck because we had taken him to the vet for an emergency and he passed away, unfortunately. But Mm -hmm. yeah, we still had the carrier in the back and Nate just texts me one day and he's like, hey, I have a surprise for you when I get home. And here I'm thinking like he got some kind of raw food or something. I'm like, yay. (laughs) He comes home and he gives me the carrier, assuming that I'm going to put it in the cupboard and or the closet. And when he gave it to me, it was heavy. So I look in and there's like, these four little eyes looking at me. I was like, oh, no, no way. <laughs> so they became part of our life. Obviously, still miss my chai cat, but uh, these two black beauties have really been such a blessing to our life. <laughs> what are their names? Um, Raja and Jai. Oh, I love that. Yeah, Raja <laughs> is, they, they really live up to their names. <laughs> it's so cool how that, that happens. Raja is very majestic and he's like an old soul, very wise. And Jai is just like this, like happy go lucky, like victories or whatever. Cause his name means victory and Raja means king. So they really embody their names. It's really cute. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Um, Panini, she, we, we named her Panini before we really knew what she was about. Right. And she's, obsessed with bread literally 
if there's bread anywhere, she like smells it immediately and will go. She gets she gets really wild with bread. <laughs> Yes, there's another cat on Instagram named Sparkle, and I think the account is Joy and Treasure. I think that's the name of the account. But this Sparkle cat is obsessed with ciabatta bread. Obsessed. I think I've seen that. Yeah, right? <laughs> that's her. She, um, yeah, she's. We we named her Panini without knowing that, so it's hilarious. We had to give her medication one time because she had a really bad ear infection, and um she wouldn't eat it in any any form and we got this like pita bread and we just put it in the middle and would like make a, a pocket and and give it to her and she, that was the only way we could get her to eat her medication <laughs> that is so cute oh my gosh yeah I love that they all have their own little personalities and stuff yeah and goes for chickens and cows and you know all the other animals they all have their own personalities too we're just not connected with them the way we are cats and dogs right so absolutely I, why i'm vegan like they all have their own little personalities and we just never see the real them <laughs> it's sad absolutely. it is mm -hmm. she's a little purr monster she just we literally if you look at her she'll just start purring it's hilarious Aww. but yeah i mean there's there's so many layers to changing we're just adding more plants. Like there's so many benefits in every aspect of life. So it's it's amazing that this bundle is out there because people don't have to like search all over for, for new inspiration and everyone brings something different. So it's really, it's such a great resource. So if, if you're joining now, we have it pinned in the link below or it's in either of our bios um, on our Instagrams and um yeah i mean i'm just excited to to share this and, and watch people make the recipes i think that's my favorite part is to see people like make it and enjoy it and and really get excited about the food because if we're not excited about our food personally i don't think a lifestyle is going to work because then we just get bored and end up sliding to whatever's convenient or tastes good. So having recipes that are just delicious and healthy and nourishing is so, so um, important. I mean, it's the cornerstone of, of a healthy lifestyle. It really is. And I wish, I so wish that I had something like this when I first started because <laughs> there was hardly anything and what there was out there. I mean, it was naturally because there wasn't as many of us back then who were sharing the message and creating recipes. So yeah, there wasn't very much back then. But if I had a bundle back then with over a 1000 recipes that were all focused on low fat raw lifestyle, I'd be like, Heck yeah, I want that for $50 to get everybody's brand new released ebooks for 50. Because yeah. it once the bundle is over, it's over November 1st at midnight Pacific time. Once it's over, if like you can still buy everybody's book, but you'll have to buy them from their websites and you'll be paying full price for them. So the total cost of everything, including Ted, Ted Carr's business course that's in the bundle, the whole bundle totals $3,200 if you were to buy everything separately, which will be the case after November 1st. So if you want it all for 50 bucks, now is your chance. You have six days link is in the chat or in our bios it's definitely worth it for sure yeah i mean it it sounds too good to be true but it's not like this is what what we're offering it's it's a a way to create community and and to bring together all these powerful creators who who have done something really beautiful and amazing and um, i see a lot of people saying i just purchased i already got mine so that's that's so fun and i'm just can't wait to see all the transformation and recipes that get created. It's, it's so beautiful. Oh, that's awesome. I wanted to ask you how you um, got to create your book with Johnny Juicer. What was the story yeah. of that? <laughs> well, Johnny's a really good friend of mine and, and my husband. My husband's name is Deepak. And Deepak and Johnny are 
are like the same person. It's, it's a little bizarre because uh, they also look the same, uh, but, but they're not. I mean, Johnny's Italian, Deepak is Indian, and, but his mom has confused them in a picture together. Um, there are several comments on my feed. Somebody was like, oh my God, did you and Deepak get a dog? And I was like, that's not Deepak. So it's, it's pretty hilarious and amazing. Um, and they're just, they're like brothers. They are. So, uh, we met Johnny and Alondra, his partner in San Diego at the village, which is her restaurant. Best restaurant. <laughs> we love it so much. And, uh, it was just an instant connection from there and since then we've gotten really close and uh, we've all had dinner a bunch of times and we were creating these really amazing recipes and having so much fun that we were like we have to share this with people like this is this is really special and it's it's next level so that's that's how it started and uh, the collaboration has just been amazing and we just made food that we want to eat. So it, it's, it's awesome because they're they're really, really good recipes. Oh, yeah. I know. Nate just joined in the chat. I noticed my husband's in here. Hey, Nate. Hi, love. Um, I wanted to say, uh, um, Nate, we should make their coconut. The, it's like, a, like the coconut cauliflower wings or whatever. We really, really want to make that one. It's like that one's the one that's on the cover of your book yes. yeah um well that one is a buffalo cauliflower wing and then we also have a coconut crusted cauliflower wing that's inspired by you know a decade ago when i used to eat coconut crusted shrimp and it just has like this really good it's it's not like i mean it's kind of like a mix of bang bang shrimp and coconut cauliflower shrimp and um with with Cauliflower. Yeah, I don't, I just say cauliflower shrimp. That was, that's incorrect. But um, it's, it's like, it's exactly like buffalo wings, but you're just crusting it with, with a, a, a dry rub, and then you have a different sauce that you toss it in. So those are the two wing recipes that are in there, but you can even use the base recipe and toss it in whatever sauce you want. It's, it's incredible that you can make these raw and they taste like they're cooked because they've just been dehydrated. So the, the texture is perfect. We served them at a party um, that Johnny and I went to and they, they went so fast. They were gone before I got into the line. And I was like, I probably should have made more of these, but they're really good. <laughs> I know when you go to a party, you always have to make two times the amount and like, Hoard your second batch for yourself <laughs> and then let everyone go crazy with the first batch. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I think I think that'll be on our on our thing to make tonight. Because we've got some frozen cauliflower, so it needs to be eaten. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that that's perfect. It's and the the trick of of whether it's cooked or raw cauliflower wings is to batter it dehydrate, toss it in the sauce, dehydrate again, and then toss it with more sauce. So you've created these like crusty layers that just give you the texture that you're looking for from like a wing, you know? Yup, that, yeah. that she crusted outside. Yeah, because it is really a lot about the texture. The yeah. texture is such a huge difference with it. Like, and what I've noticed with cauliflower is that in the past a lot of people would just do like the straight raw cauliflower and it would just be way too crunchy and too cauliflower-y i guess yeah. but chris kendall started doing frozen cauliflower like he'd freeze it and when you freeze it it just expands the fiber walls so it's like more limp after so you take it out of the freezer and it's like almost like you steamed it or you cooked it it has the same texture still considered raw and right. it changes the game <laughs> totally yeah I mean there's so many techniques that have been created in the last few years that are a game changer for for that texture that you're looking for mm -hmm. it's amazing exactly like Daniel has the raw hot dog in his ebook 
Oh my gosh, I've seen a couple people make it already and tag him and they're just like, oh my God, the pictures are amazing. And it looks like a hot dog. And it I've actually seen it. tastes like, you know, it has the same texture of one. And it's just brilliant what people are coming up with. And I'm blessed that we have everybody in the bundle with all of these incredibly creative recipes. And the bundle yeah. won't be the same again either. Like we'll do another bundle next year at some point and it'll have all brand new different things in it too. So if you like this bundle and if you like the collection in it, get it now before it's gone. <laughs> yeah, a hundred percent. Your, I mean, your, your party recipes, I don't even think I'm going to serve them at a party. It's, that's just for me. <laughs> <laughs> totally right. It's like a party with yourself. Why not? <laughs> exactly. I'm like, I don't, if I'm going to put in all this effort, I'm going to eat it. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Right. And make a double batch. So you have some for later. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's such a, an important trick to to just make more than you think and it depends on the recipe you can freeze it sometimes or you can just um you can eat it and if you have too much then you can share it but only then <laughs> right only if you have extra <laughs> yeah. yeah totally yeah. amazing well thank you so much for joining me today this has been so wonderful is there anything else you want to talk about before we hop off um other than the fact that I hope that everybody takes care of themselves today. And that includes eating proper healthy food, hydrating yourself, go for a walk, spend some time with yourself, relax, stretch, whatever it is. I just encourage everybody to take good care of themselves because we get these bodies for free and we tend to not value things we get for free. So really, respect your body and take the time to make some delicious raw meals and and have a wonderful day and i hope you guys enjoy all the other lives that are happening you can see all the lives that are happening click the link in the chat and you can click on live schedule on the website and you can see all the lives that are happening all the way up until november 1st so at the end of the bundle we're gonna go out with a bang at the end <laughs> yeah but amazing so that would be wonderful yeah i love that i mean it's it's important for me to 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 do things without being on my phone i mean i get so we all do just you know we we forget that we put our phone in the other room and then we really take care of ourselves like that that self-care is is exponentially more powerful so i know yeah. we're on our phones right now but just totally. carve out a little bit of space. <laughs> exactly. Everybody. And one more thing that just popped into my head, how you said, like, you put your phone away and you really follow uh, your self-care. Like, obviously, we want people to be enjoying our lives. But um, there are two other contributors to the bundle. Angelica, who wrote Raw Vegan Re Yoga Retreat, and Olivia, who wrote Live Like Live 2.0. So they both have books in the bundle. They were doing an interview the other day on one of the lives. And Angelica asked Olivia, what was her biggest key takeaway about staying with Jesse Itzler in his driveway for the month that she was there? And she said that the number one thing she learned from that was that they go all in with whatever they're doing and they don't get distracted by stuff. So if they're watching TV with their kids, they're all in watching TV with their kids. There's no phone on the side. They're not thinking about emails. They're not doing their, they're all in. If they are doing emails, they're all in with their emails. They're not checking YouTube or replying to other comments. They're not multitasking like that. They go all in with whatever task they're doing. And I know for myself, I need to implement more of that in my life because I feel like I multitask a lot. But when I do do one task, I have so many other things on my mind. And if I was focused more on one thing at a time, I could get a lot more done than being so like all over the place with everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think we have, we have the luxury of not being bored ever. And, um, you know, that, having that at our fingertips, we, we do, we lose focus on a lot of things. So I love that. That's really, really powerful. For sure. But it was yeah. so good. Thank you so much again for yeah. hanging. 
I got to go live in nine minutes with Aga. <laughs> awesome. Well, have a wonderful time. Say bye. 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 Bye, Mimi. <laughs> Thank you, everyone who joined. Uh, if it lets me link it, I'll, I'll put it on IGTV so you can come back and watch the whole thing if you, if you didn't have access. Yes. So, IGTV. I, uh, yeah, I hope you have an amazing day filled with unexpected beauty. Aw, you too. You too. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Much Bye, love. everyone.